You're listening to The Morning Show with Dave Hyde on 99.2 Hermitage FM, online and on your smart speaker. So I'm joined by Charlotte Rose on the phone. Hello, Charlotte. How are you? Hi, David. I'm very good. Thank you. A little birdie tells me that you're in Monaco at the moment. Yes, I am. And, uh, you know, I've been here for a while because pretty much as soon as the lockdown uh, started in London, I spent there maybe two, three months and then... I left to town for France um, to just get a little bit of peace and, and stay away from the whole drama of the COVID. I think I think here you have a little bit more freedom. What's it been like being in Monaco? It wasn't bad, I must say. Um, last summer I had a great time. You know, I've been just driving around to Italy and you know visiting Switzerland, Italy, south of France. So, so you you have that freedom that you can move. You know, um, and then um, the, the restrictions haven't been too bad. You know, I, I, it's been weird, obviously, because there were certain hours you can eat and you can not eat and all of that. But definitely it's been easier than in UK. And are you based in Monaco or are you actually based in the UK normally? I've been based in London for the last six years. And uh, since I met my fiancé, I've been in between. So so he's a resident here in Monaco and I became a resident as well. So I'm kind of here and there. Yeah. Because you're originally from Poland, I believe. <laughs> yeah. You see quite a, quite a lot of locations, right? So I was born in Poland. And then when I was 20, I moved to London and that's where I uh, graduated from university. And uh, recently, for the last three years, I've been living in Monaco as well. So when you was in London, I believe, uh, sorry, before you was in London, you graduated at the Music Academy of, is it Lodz? Yeah, well, I studied there. I didn't graduate in the end because I had quite a story there and I, and I went through a lot of bad stuff. I mean, I, I went through mental abuse from my teacher. So it was really tough. I, you know, I had, I, I had panic attacks. I had anxiety. I lost my voice for a period of time. Oh, wow. And then, yeah. And then, you know, the advice of the psychologist was actually, you know, can you change the environment? Can you, do you have any family in UK, let's say? Um, because the, the classical music industry in Poland, you know, the academies, all that institutions, they're very conservative and they're very tough. Um, and mental abuse is like a daily thing. Like, honestly, so many students of artistic institutions in Poland went through it. And so she said, well, maybe you can move abroad. And, you know, I happen to have um, a family in UK. Um, so I, I pretty soon, you know, I, I moved and then I studied songwriting and music production in London at LCCM. Because your new song, Raise a Toast, it's very emotional. You, you pull in a lot of emotion from that song and your voice is so powerful on that track. Yeah. Is it because of the operatic training that you've had that you, you're able to do this with your voice? Thank you. You know, partially, probably, yes. But I feel like uh, many people, you know, um, you meet a lot of people that say, oh, I would like to sing like you. Uh, like, can I learn it? You know? And they think like just with great singing lessons, you can um, have a powerful voice. I think like you can improve your voice and you can learn to control it. But I always had a big voice already as a you know little child. Everybody knew about it. So my, <laughs> my voice was discovered quite early, yeah. Oh, d- 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 does that mean then you were told to be quiet quite a lot when you were a child then? Oh my God, don't even tell me. Like <laughs> I had problems at school all the time. Because, you know, apart from my voice being very loud and very strong when I sing, it's also very strong and loud when I speak. So I had situations when a teacher would tell me, don't shout at me or like, don't raise your voice. And I would be like, but I am not. I'm, it's just me talking, you know. So I, I got in a lot of trouble with, with my loud voice. And I always try to speak quieter because I can even be very loud on the street while walking and talking, you know. So people can hear you coming a mile away. It's great stuff. Yeah. Now I've looked at I've, I've looked at your social media, and I've got to be honest. You have a very unique dress sense. Thank you. You sort of take elements from the 1950s and 60s and make it a bit more modern. Yeah, I love that. And you know what? I I kind of like to play with different styles, different eras as well. Like for me, raises toast era and 
all my, you know, first releases, it's all about that orchestral sound combined with modern production. Therefore, I find that my look also has to be like very glamorous, but at the same time, more modern, not to seem like, you know, vintage pinup girl, let's just say. So, so I kind of make both worlds and, um, that's the look for now but I love fashion and I always loved it um, and makeup you know I, I love expressing myself through makeup and clothes yes yeah, it gives you it gives you this when say when looking at your photos online in your on your Instagram pages you sort of do try a lot and I noticed as well that on there but done the fact you did some music at a fashion um, uh, a fashion runway um I can't think of the words now. Fashion uh, show, fashion yeah. show, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I did that almost two years ago. So that was my first original single. A uh, fashion designer called David Bolinski, he's a judge on the top model show in Poland. Oh, right, He okay. noticed me on Instagram. Yeah, he, he discovered me on Instagram and he heard the song and he fell in love with it so much that he said, you know, I'm doing a fashion show. Will you come and perform? So it was really cool and there was lots of celebrities there. I had lots of fun and, you know, it was, I would say my first like a big performance was like television there, private television um, and all of that. So it was very exciting. So did he dress you on the day as well? Yeah, he, he made the dresses for me and for the backing vocals. And did you get to keep them? Uh, yeah, well... Yes and no. So I, he's supposed to send it to me, but then he didn't. But it's okay. You know, how it is with artists, it's like you wear one time something for a performance and then you kind of don't want to repeat it because you always want it to be like fresh and new and like a new creation. So it's okay. I, if he sends it to me, I might wear it, you know, to go to, to the casino in Monaco. <laughs> he, he owes you a favor. I think you've got to appear on the next top model in Poland. It means you might have to appear on next top model in Poland as a judge. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, I should call him up and say, you know, he owes me now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to perform on the show and have him walk down, uh, walk down on the TV on down the catwalk to, to your new single? No. So basically, the, the performance then it was like a stage set right next to the catwalk so I could see all the models walking and like they were waving at me as I was performing and like it was really cool um, but I haven't performed on the on the top model show itself yeah well that's what he owes you he, he deserved that if he doesn't send you the dress yeah you know we've been thinking about it and we've been discussing that but unfortunately uh, last year it couldn't happen due to all the travel restrictions so I couldn't go to Poland really well, off the back of David's sort of catwalk you've been on the uh, fashion show, Vogue did something about you as well, didn't they? Oh, yeah. It was lots of articles in this kind of fashion magazine. So there was Elle, there was Vogue, uh, a few of the, let's say, Polish um, magazines as well. Um, yeah, it was it was really cool. So who are your inspirations in the music industry? Who Who is it you'd like to be or where would it be? Where would you like to go? but do it in your style? Well, I think like from current um, pop star, my role model is Lady Gaga. You know, she's incredibly wise. She's such an intelligent woman. And at the same time, she's an incredible professionalist, a great musician, a creator, a visionary. So she's like a Leonardo da Vinci of music. And I feel like, you know, I like to have that creative control and I like to... I, you know, I self-directed the music video for Raise the Souls, which happened actually accidentally because uh, of the COVID restrictions. I couldn't travel to London to film it with the director I planned to do it with. But I really like to, you know, to, to control the vision when it comes to music and the visual. Yeah, I've, I've watched the video a couple of times. I've got to be honest, it looks like you did have fun doing it as well. Yeah, it was lots of fun. It was here in Monaco in a, in a hotel and... I was the stylist, the makeup artist, um, and my fiancé was the cameraman. Keeping it all in-house, making it cheap, I like it. Yeah, well, it wasn't so cheap with my taste in the end, you know, all the <laughs> champagne and cakes and all of that in the five-star hotel. But, so no, at least I enjoyed. <laughs> well, the thing is, if people go over to your Instagram, you do a video of before you did it, the, the hotel room, and it looks absolutely yeah. amazing with the with the hot tub, the jacuzzi. 
and then looking over the, the Bay of Monaco. Yeah, that's right. Well, you can see the uh, the whole video, you know, the behind the scenes video on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's a couple of minutes. So it shows the whole process of, of me getting ready and filming. So does that mean you made your fiancé do double the work? One, a backstage video, and two, the actual video? Um, yeah. Like, he has to film all the time. It was literally a day and a half of filming. We started in the morning, we finished around midnight, and then the next day we kept on going with some stuff that was missing. It was really tiring, but at the same time, as I said, it was lots of fun. But because there was nobody, you know, to tell me what I'm supposed to do or anything, it was very personal and fun. Well, later on in your career, you know, in, in five, ten years' time, you'll be able to look back at that video and go, actually, I had full control over that, I like this. This is the way I want to go with this video. It gives you that insight, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I always wanted to be an actress and a singer. So for me, like, anything cinematic, that's already, like, super interesting. And I would love to have more of that creative power in the future um, when I'm going to be doing some bigger productions with directors. Well, I've got a few questions for you, what I call quick questions. And I think it's sort of with with you being in Monaco... These questions could be quite good. So, would you rather have shoes or a handbag? Oh, that's a tricky question. Well, I guess... Uh, oh, my God. Well, I guess the handbag, because, like, you can still walk without the shoes, but if you don't have the handbag, where do you put all your stuff? Ah, there we go. Would you rather be seen in public with your makeup done or your hair done? Whoa, I'm super, like, I'm such a perfectionist. Like, I can't <laughs> do one or another. But if I have to, I would say um, makeup. Yeah, Got like I'd rather have my makeup done than my hair. Yeah. Oh, I know this. I know the feeling. I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> would you Would you rather yeah. go in a car or a boat? In a car or a boat? Well, it depends what kind of boat. Because if it's like a you know 40 meter yacht, then of course the boat. <laughs> But, uh, mm, hmm. if I travel, I would choose an airplane. Well, that was the next it's, question. It's would it be a, faster? The next question is economy or first class? <laughs> first class? Why, why is this even a question on the list? <laughs> Who would choose economy? <laughs> I have to ask these questions. We like to know more about you. And then, because you've lived in London and because you're in Monaco, is it tea or champagne? Which is your favourite? Uh, is it, sorry, what was the first one? Tea, a cup of tea or champagne? Ah, okay, tea or champagne. And here, you see, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to say tea because champagne has bubbles and that's not good for my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and my final, yeah, my fi- I love tea. And my final question for you is fish and chips or something French? Hmm. No, I'm not a big fan of French cuisine, so I'm going to say uh, fish and chips. What is, yeah. your, what is your favourite meal? If you, if you could only have one meal for today and for the rest of the week, what would that meal be? Um, I would say sea bass in salt crust and some, you know, some vegetables, some fries, maybe. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining me this morning, Charlotte. We're going to go and play your brand new single, which is available now, which is a Razor Toast. Thank you so much, David. You're listening to Hermitage FM. The heart of your community. And this is Dave Hyde.